Good morning. Continuing on with our motor interface pump controller, uh, we've uh, managed to have the APB controller uh, control the pump on and off capabilities, monitor the seal leak detect, monitor the over temperature condition. Now we need to tie the controller into an actual motor starter. These are available on our uh, website. Uh, if you go to www.ingram.products.com and uh, scroll down to motor starters, you see that there's a family of these available. Motor starters quite often will give us a feedback signal that tells us whether it actually has activated, which is pretty important if uh, we are relying on the controller to turn on the pump and the pump actually never turns on. We take a look at the circuit we've developed so far um, and run it very quickly in simulation mode. We see that we have a thermal overload that has to be normally closed to keep the alarms off. We have a leak detector, a seal detector. Um, this threshold should be up around 10 volts. It will trigger on at uh, below 7.5. We have a uh, start input that uh, starts a timer, starts your pump. Pump comes on. Then we can have a stop condition that turns the pump off. If for some reason, when the pump is running, and we have a thermal overload condition, we have a alarm light come on, start flashing, and a siren that could be activated if this contact hasn't been uh, made. We also have a display showing the current status of the pump in the seal level. So if we clear this alarm condition, the pump will start up again and we'll show the pump on. So now we need to add in the contactor to the pump. Um, first of all, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, contactor will have a, an output available to tell us whether or not it actually has closed. We don't expect that to necessarily act instantaneously, so there may be a time delay coming back from that signal. Well, first of all, let's put in a signal to, to detect when that uh, contact closes. We'll tie this one into input number 5, and we'll call it um, contact. Well, since that isn't going to happen instantaneously, we're going to have to put in a time delay between the time the pump comes on and when that contact closes. So we use a time on delay block. And we can tie um, the uh, input from the pump to here. Rather than feeding wires all over our screen, what I can do is go in and put an input and set its property to be looking at the Q00 output. And it's called pump still. And we'll use that to start her timer. Timer itself, we can set the time delay. During our development process, uh, since we're going to have to manually close that contact, let's set that to about five seconds, give us time to get over there and do that. And we're going to use this contact to reset it. So provided this contact is closed within five seconds, this output should never go on. To quickly monitor that output to see if our function is working the way we want, we just set up a uh, dummy output. We start a simulator, we satisfy the thermal overload, satisfy the threshold level, we start a pump, we let our pump start up. We see this goes on, this timer starts timing. And when it gets to five seconds, since we haven't satisfied the contact closure, this alarm condition will go off. If we uh, restart that whole process, but this time once the pump goes on, we'll satisfy the contact closure, and this point never goes on. So that's going to handle the uh, sensing that the contact actually did close. Now we have the problem that we have two different conditions. We want to have this contact closure failure or the thermal overload set off the light, so we need to modify this circuitry over here slightly. If we 
first of all, we'll get rid of our dummy output. And we'll get rid of this connection here. And we'll put in an OR gate because we have two different conditions. Either one can cause that output to activate. One condition is if thermal overload triggers. The second condition is if the uh, thermal overload or the pump contact uh, triggers it. We're not using the third input, so we leave it as low. We take this output, tie it to the alarm light, and the alarm silent. Run the simulator very quickly. Set up a threshold. Thermal overload situation satisfied. We start it. We won't satisfy the contact. And we see that the light starts flashing after it senses the contact hasn't closed. Well, we have the problem that we have two different things causing this light to go off and no way to really understand what's causing it from the operator's point of view. So what we'll do is we'll add another human interface display screen. And if you remember, when we take a look at the properties, there's actually two types of displays. We can have a normal page, which is just running information, or a triggered page. I'm going to make this one a triggered page. That means when this input goes active, this screen will automatically pop up. The text we're going to put down, we'll call this one thermal. And then we'll put down another block of text and we'll call that contact. Now the operator will be able to tell what's causing the, uh, the alarm condition. You put two little indicator lights up. This indicator will have it tied to the thermal input. So that's input number three. And this input is tied to the contact input which is input number five. And this is not an initial screen, this is actually a triggered screen. So we'll click on this. The last thing we need to do is tie this point so that when the alarm goes off, the screen will automatically come up. Okay, running the simulator again. We see that first thing that came up was our error screen because we have an alarm condition. We satisfy the thermal and we satisfy the uh, seal input. We can now start our pump. Time is down. Starts this timer. Contact doesn't get closed. So when that time's out, we see that we have a thermal uh, thermal condition satisfied, the contact hasn't been satisfied. So now the operator knows why the lights are going off and can go and take appropriate action. If I click that, it clears that error message and we can go back and look and see that the pump is running and the seal level is okay. So that has shown how we can tie in a uh, auxiliary contact to our alarm system. The last thing I want to do is take a very brief look at doing current monitoring. Now we'll do that in the next video. That will give us a uh, preventative maintenance um, uh, capability because as the motor starts to wear, the current draw will become higher and we can use that for uh, avoiding problems in the future. Uh, come back and see us. That will be in the next video. Thank you very much.